What on earth is that? I'm actually going to be releasing a workout video soon. I don't want to go too much up this ladder because... <laughs> that is a lethal combo. You're pulling bits of spider out of your hair. The floor drops significantly. <laughs> You were warned. Good morning guys, welcome back to another episode of Artisan Electrics, where today we're doing a car charger install with a twist. Um, I'm with Lee and basically we're gonna be running it out to a garage, but we've got to try and find a clever way to get it in without digging a trench. I'm hoping we can go up through the loft and pop down into the main consumer unit in the house or one of the sub-main consumer units in the house. But either way, it should be interesting and we've got an awful lot to do and not a lot of time, so we're gonna get straight to it. If we're using the MIJ, which we can, because it doesn't, it doesn't go anywhere, unsafe, it's clipped direct the whole way through the loft. So we might be able to cable tongue up into that section of loft. Hopefully we can get to it through the eaves, cleat it along, clip it all the way through, and it's going to go through the loft in there, across to that wall, dividing the main section of house and the other section of house, and then through the loft over there down to the charger. Should we, well, should we get a ladder up and actually get a route through? I'd say get the cable pulled through and then yeah. someone do this end, someone do that end. Cool, yeah, let's do it. Is that meant to be? That will do donkey. Where are we saying, like, this pier here? I reckon in between these two. So I just drill right there. Or there, and then we can well, take it in and clean we're gonna it down wanna, the side. If this is here, we're going to want to come clip down a joist, don't we, and then curl it on the bottom So Yeah, in the corner, I'd say. Get it on the drill road. There we go. That is a lethal combo, that hilter drill with the Bosch fade bits. Beautiful. I'm just using the set square to keep it neat, just to make sure that I'm drilling the same place every time. You do this rather than cleat it so that if they ever want to convert out the loft or whatever, there's not a cable in their way. Oh, and I love that smell of wood. Beautiful. If you're not a fan of spiders, you might want to look away now. They're just everywhere. <laughs> They're massive as well. The worst thing is when you're in the shower in the evening, and I feel like only tradesmen will know this pain, um, or maybe loft organisers, if that's a job. When you have the shower in the evening, and you're like, oh, what's that rolled up in my hair, and you're pulling bits of spider out of your hair. This bit's getting through it easy anyways. Is that one of the Bosch bits? That is one of my Bosch bits. Bosch, send us some new ones. Bosch are <laughs> playing hard to get. I messaged them asking if I could have their little speedy screwdriver. Did they say you're no Bundy? They just never replied to me, even ruder. No. If I was from Staffordshire, they'd send it to me. That is the one thing as well with working in this country is you're very safe. I mean, you might get stabbed, but in terms of insects and wildlife, like I'm absolutely coated right now in like candy floss, spiders and spiders webs, and it doesn't horrify me anymore. Now that I'm more used to domestic work, to be sitting in the van eating my lunch and have a spider crawled out my shirt and all on my lap. Imagine if you're in another country, like if you're an electrician in India, or even like Australia or America some places, if you had spiders crawl out, oh mate, you'd be like, renewing your last will and testament It'd be terrifying i think if i found a brown recluse and i found out i had three minutes to live i probably um what would you do if you had a brown recluse come out of your trousers and you found out you only had three minutes to live three minutes is a long time for some people oh, hello paint me like one of your french girls jack 
It's got shudders. <laughs> I'm going for it. I'm going to clear the worst of the webs with my feet. It's the cycling motion. There we go. I feel bad because they took ages waking them, but I don't really want to walk through them. I'm actually going to be releasing a workout video soon. Working out the electrician's way. This is called the web clearer. Oof, oof. Artisan special, how to lose a chin in three weeks. That's going to be the best B-roll you've ever shot in your entire life. Now we need to see if we can get through that other section of the floor drop significantly. <laughs> <laughs> you were warned. <laughs> this is where we need Rover. All right, so we've got that up to that first point of the building. We're now in the separate part of the building. It's like a, I don't even know what this is, like an old farm cottage or barn conversion or something. And I'm just gonna climb through the loft now with Lee to see if we can actually find where that gets to. I hope that the cameraman's lovely trip he had back there made the video as well. If not, then I'm going on strike. <laughs> Ooh, I don't know what insulation that is, Lee. What do you reckon? If that was on its own. I don't wanna go too much up this ladder because there's a full moon about there. <laughs> <laughs> See, over there. That... Oh, yeah, that white stuff. What is that? I'd like to say no, but I'm not an expert. I have no idea. I have no idea either. It's really hard to tell when it's glass fibre. If it's loose fill, then yeah, you just you don't touch it. I think the best thing is just to, if you're not sure, keep clear of it. I'm going to take a picture of it and send it to the asbestos guy. What, Viking asbestos? Yeah. I sent some to him before. He got back to me like he's, straight away. He's so nice. Yeah, he, I found some really nasty stuff wrapped right around some pipes. It looks to me so white that I think it's just glass fibre. A shout out to Viking Asbestos. If you don't follow him on Instagram, he's, he's a legend and he's a really solid fella. I'm not saying you should do this because I know it's a bit cheeky. I really owe him a bottle or something. I come across dodgy looking insulation all the time at work and I'll send it to him. I'll just WhatsApp him the pictures. And um, more often than not, you know, he'll reply with, no, do not touch that, or yeah, that should be all right, or I'm not sure until I get a sample, but either way, it's just a bit more of an expert opinion. Generally, if you come across it at work, especially if you're not sure, it's better just to leave it. I think we need to drill um, a new hole. Do we have an SDS bit that size? Yeah. I can drill that through now if you want. Can you go as far over to the right as you can? I Joist. can't get any further than that cable. That cable's on the very, very far right. What, you can't do an angle drilling That's you're telling like me? That's like hates Obama far right, honestly. Do I need to tell Jordan you can't do angle drilling? <laughs> Corey's in the loft just behind there. I'll get you a drill bit. He had this one. Oh. oh, he just took the top of your spine off. Oh, oh. That cheese grater. I nearly, I nearly did it earlier. Oh, mate. Do you know what makes it worse? The embroidery on the back. <laughs> because Jordan's been talking about, um, obviously we're desperately trying to find someone to hire and we're doing the considering someone less experienced electrically to just training them on a specific thing. The whole Henry Ford production line mentality, you know, you can train anyone to do a single task. 
I'm feeling like recently, I can't help but disagree, that EV is a single task. I just think there's so much to it. It's actually so involved. Like the, the chargers themselves, you, you, you've seen, they're, they are, they're easy. The installs are very similar, but like the actual routes on this, there's so many ways we could have taken that, so many options, but I feel we found the most efficient, most tidy um, way of doing it. It's only because of experience and doing it the wrong way loads of times, really, where you do a job, you go back and then you go, actually, I should have done it that way, or I should, could have done it this way, should have done it that way, that you start to learn. And like, for example, here's a perfect example, right? We've not done this, but someone's spent a really long time making that conduit bend round and onto that joist. Whereas you look and you go, and they've done it for all the light fittings, all identical. And they've obviously put a lot of effort and time into that when you go, well, you know, just put the T piece like a couple of inches that way and just teed it straight up and had one offset straight in. It would have been neater and quicker. That's only because I've probably done it wrong like that a hundred times that I know to do that. So I feel like actually for whatever task you're doing, if it is electrical, unless it's literally periodic inspections or something, and then maybe you don't need much install experience. I think you need to be an experienced electrician. Even then, if you're doing EICRs, often I'll code things because it's not been installed great. And you're only gonna know it's not been installed great because you're experienced in installing all those various things. So I feel like if I've got to be properly experienced and qualified, or it's not gonna be worth having someone. Yeah, Do you have that magnet thing I can test? No. Yeah. Do you want it back? No. Do you like the flukes? This just looks so like homemade. I want one of the, oh it definitely is, just a bit of heat shrink isn't it with yeah. a magnet. I'm taking absolute full credit for this magnet thing Nathan. Be like, ah oh, so this is my tool of the day. I found it online. I actually helped make it with some heat shrink. This is my beautiful tool of the day. Thing is when you're experienced you just, you find tools like this. Um, you know, hours of scouring the internet and all that jazz. I actually can't bother to go around that sarcastic line because people take me seriously. Absolutely wicked. It's a little clamp that clamps onto the earth bar. And then this is a screw that should be magnetized. It is very, very homemade DIY, but it's brilliant. Right, look. Oh, that is so cool. I actually showed these to Lee and now he uses them on everything. He's not the most original guy you've ever met. Right, so that is the job finished. I've just gone back and um, double checked all of the main fuse sizes, checked all the earthing system and things, because that's actually a, um, a sub-main that board that we've connected onto. So what I've done is I've connected this up um, with a grid limit to the just below the maximum rating of the breaker to the sub-main, which is a 63 amp breaker. So I've got a 60 amp grid limit on this. Although realistically, um, with everything pulling at the minute in there, with like the heaters and everything, it was only pulling a few hundred watts, so I'm not really too worried about it getting anywhere close to that, to be perfectly honest. The patch cable, I've gone and extended the patch, um, just put a slightly longer patch lead in for the hub, so that's nice and neat now. The customer's really happy, car's charging, so happy days, we're ready to move on. I feel like a little year seven about to start secondary school. I just need my oversized coat now, and then I'll be sorted. Right, thank you very much guys for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you managed to learn something, and uh, I'll see you on the next one.